Well, a thunderstorm has indeed started yet again. You know, it seems like every time I've been trying to record, you know, something over the past week, that interview I tried to do last week, or that interview I got in last week, crazy stuff, you know, thunderstorm before and during the whole interview. So, you know, those things going on on my end. Um, and now, tonight, of course, you know, another thunderstorm decided to start up. But yeah, it's that's all fine and dandy. We got some cross to talk about anyway. Um, let's try and you know keep this brief because there's a lot of stuff to talk about, really. But at the same time, we're still kind of in the middle of things, you know what I'm saying? So we got about a month to go until the NLL season ends, and you wanna wanna know something? You know, I don't I don't think I expected, you know, teams like Halifax or Georgia or Rochester. You know, to really be in the mix of things. But then again, did you expect the Albany Firewolves to be 10 and 4 with Ty Kurtz, you know, just lighting it up? No, no, not at all. Um, did you expect the whole, you know, New York Riptide moving to Ottawa to become the Black Bears or whatever? Yeah, kind of. Um, New York's the, the struggle with New York, the problem with New York is, is that. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, Albany in the whole indoor arena football circles is just, or like, you know, there's several markets like this, like in the arena indoor football circles to kind of circle back a little bit, you know, like Albany or Corpus Christi or, you know, Frisco area, you know, Dallas area. Where it's just like, this is not a market that you want to try, you know, two or three times. And the NLL has tried New York three times now, and it has just not worked each time. The Sal um, Coliseum or whatever it's called, you know, is basically either becoming a casino or getting demolished or whatever. I don't know what's going on, but the lease has expired for New York and they're going to dip out, you know, after the season. They're six and eight right now anyway. So, you know, they're in a weird position to where they could still, you know, make the postseason. But it's like, you know, what in the world is going to happen there? Um, so, yeah. Um, the standings right now, you know, again, you know, kind of inconspicuous with the whole, you know, a lot of teams are very, very interesting. Like Buffalo is seven and six, but yet Connor Farrell has come into the team and has helped keep Buffalo in this thing. Buffalo was like under 500 at one point, I think. And that was really crazy to watch, you know, really crazy to see. Um, and even though, you know, Buffalo, you know, is struggling this year, they still beat Toronto. They still beat Toronto again. You know, it's like what's crazy is that Vancouver and Las Vegas, you know, I, I expected Las Vegas to be bad, but Colorado being 4 9 is still crazy to me. Very crazy. And, you know, you know, there's, there's just things that you just can't ignore. Again, San Diego feels like a team that can definitely, you know, take on Toronto in the NL Cup, you know. I really feel that way because of how stacked that roster is. I got to see that again. I got to see that roster firsthand. We're talking, you know, Dane Doby was like barely in that game that I watched at, you know, Dickie's Arena, but he definitely showed up. You know, Dixon, again, Stotts, Jacks. I mean, just um, uh, Leclaire. Yeah, Trey Leclaire. You know, just just the whole unit. Out there, and then another guy they got back is Brody Merrill. They got Brody Merrill back, which is insane to me. Like, how do you get this man back? Like, what? What do you mean he's back on the seals? You know, like it just doesn't make any sense at this point. So, yeah, the NL is looking very interesting. Most teams have about uh, three to four games to go, three to five you know, three to five games to go, or maybe I'm, a little, yeah, three to five games to go for most teams anyway. Um, the PLL right now, you know, Andy Copeland stepped down from the Water Dogs. You know, that was a big thing. Chris Great got traded. The Atlas to the Redwoods, of course, free agency has started. The PLL has gone to Tokyo and everything. So, but the big thing, the big thing is those game times are starting to, you know, be shown, you know, when you look on the PLO website, game times are starting to show up for the summer. So 
get that ESPN Plus ready to go, y'all. Get it, get it up and get it ready to go. It's going to be one hell of a season in the PLL. I'm, ex- I'm hoping for a lot more, um, you know, games on ABC. I'm hoping for a lot more ESPN2, a little bit more ESPN. You know, there's room. There's room on the ESPN family that works. It's just the ESPN won't do it. You really want to, you know, really want to showcase that ESPN Plus. But honestly, I, I need more than a third of the schedule on TV. You know, half the schedule will do it for me. So, PLO right now, the end free agency is open. So, teams are starting to sign players and everything like that, or keeping players locked up, you know, keeping players, you know, on their side for God knows how long. You know, some guys have been signed all the way up to 2026, 2027, 2028. And the PLL draft will take place the day before my birthday, May 7th. So there's that as well. But yeah, let's get to the let's get to the other big picture again. You know, don't want to talk about PLL too long right now. It's not that time yet, really. Other big picture is that college lacrosse picture. You know, I don't know what to make of the Ivies right now. You have teams like Cornell, Harvard, Princeton, Yale. Can't play a lick of defense to save their life. You have teams playing hot potato with the number one, you know, with the with the number one ranking, you know, Denver, Notre Dame, Virginia, Maryland, Duke, all playing hot potato, losing games when they aren't supposed to be losing games. You know, it's kind of crazy that Duke, you know, lost the game to what? They lost either the Yale or Prince. No, no, no. It was either Penn. I think it was Penn they lost to, and then they beat Princeton. Maybe I'm getting things mixed up. But, yeah, um, the Ivies, I don't know what to make of them right now. I really don't know. They have some big victories in non-conference play. Some of them don't. Um, of course, Big Ten conference play has started this week. And, you know, really the Big Ten doesn't have very many big wins in non-conference play. You know, they the, like, like the teams that do have enough, like Penn State, who's rattled off, you know, like five – Straight wins at the start, no one won, but like, but like Maryland, uh, they got blasted by Virginia. Johns Hopkins lost to Denver, and you know, they had a dog fight with Syracuse, who just beat Duke in one of the worst games I think I've seen Duke play in the past couple of years. You know, only scoring four. And Brennan O'Neill was a non-factor in that game. So was Joey Spelina. Will Martin's just an absolute wall, by the way. Um, yeah, Syracuse is back. So definitely, that is definitely a tournament team. And again, the ACC tournament this year is a four-team tournament. So somebody is going to get left out. So losing a game in ACC play already is bad for Duke. Can't have a loss in ACC play, you know. I mean, but at least, you know, Notre Dame still looks, you know, pretty good. You know, um, Virginia definitely looks like the best ACC team, in my personal opinion. But Notre Dame is close behind them. But Syracuse is getting in there. North Carolina is still bizarre to me. They're still not a very good team, in my personal opinion. That's just me. And then Duke is Duke. Really good team. But, you know. There, there have been some clunkers here by Duke. You know, and again, the Syracuse game is the latest example of an absolute clunker of a game. So, I don't know. But, yeah, the the rest of the Big Ten, I, again, I don't know what to feel. You know, Ohio State, uh, Michigan, uh, they're, they're okay. Not too great. Rutgers is all right. Maryland, of course, is good Hopkins is good and Penn State is good you know so I feel like we get three teams right there for the Big Ten of course the ACC may either have three no we're we're probably gonna go with four we're definitely gonna have four ACC teams at the big dance come you know May we're definitely gonna have four ACC teams in there maybe like two or three Ivy League teams and the rest are at large bids so I think I'm I think, they might, I think my math is not math and right, but yeah, that should get us to 17, I think, question mark. Don't quote me on that. So, 
you know, right now this weekend, that's when the whole Big Ten conference play has started. Of course, you know, conference play has started for some leagues already and everything like that. So, you know, you have to you have to really keep that in mind as we get through March and get it really into April. So some teams are fighting, you know, for, you know, just one spot. Teams like Army, you know, they could coast and stay undefeated. You know, really good defense. The same with Quinnipiac, you know, and I always mispronounce their name because I always do. I'm sorry. Um, and then, of course, NJIT is America's team. Absolute unit of a team. You know, they, hopefully they get the auto bid. Oh, I forgot. Are they in the America East? Or is the – no, it's not. No, it's not the 18. Is the, it's either the America East or the, or the MAC. Either one. But I hope NJIT gets the auto bid. I know they lost this past week, but I hope they get the auto bid anyway. Definitely a team to watch. Uh, again, teams with some really good defenses like Army, QU, like I said already. Um, there's only like a couple undefeateds left in college across, but Army's like the most notable one because they're number one, and they have a, a pretty good win on their resume. And they should be able to beat, you know, most of the Patriot League pretty handily. You know, like, but then again, you know, Navy can steal one like they did against Johns Hopkins in overtime. So, you know, you never know. You never know in this. You never know in Gallows Cross. You never know. You only have 12 to 15 opportunities to do this whole shit, be, shit dig before the tournament. So, yeah, that'll do it for me. Um, I don't really have many more thoughts to say. Again, um, the NLL is looking pretty, pretty good going into the playoffs. You know, again, a lot of teams have about you know a good chunk of games left. So we're gonna we're really gonna get into it in the next couple weeks, man. It's gonna be fun. So that'll do it for me. Um, I'll, I'll talk about you know more of you know whenever ESPN puts out that PLL schedule. Hopefully, they put it out way before May seventh. And we can talk about it then, of course. You know, we'll talk about these um, conference title races by the, by by the time I talk to you guys again about lacrosse, it'll be time for conference championships, the NFL playoffs, and of course, you know, getting closer and closer to the PLL draft. So, until then, see y'all soon. And Big Ten conference play starts this weekend, so go to Big Ten Network and watch some Big Ten lacrosse if you don't want to watch any college basketball or anything like that. you know. But you're probably going to watch college basketball anyway, aren't you? You are. Just, just, I know, you, I know, I know, I know who y'all are. So, shout out to the new subscribers as well. Welcome to the family. And potentially, I'll have an interview at some point. Maybe this weekend. I don't know. We'll see. Um, if you're in Texas, stay safe because it's raining as well. So I'll see y'all later.